हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर राजेश चोखानी आई जनरल पीडियाट्रिशियन फ्रॉम बैंड्रा मुंबई एंड टुडे वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट जॉन्डिस नॉट जस्ट लिवर डिजीज सो वी ऑल नो दैट वी लेबल येलो डिसकलरेशन ऑफ म्यूकस मेम्ब्रेन्स एंड स्किन एज जॉन्डिस एंड वी टेंड टू रिफ्लेक्सली एक्स्ट्रापोलेटेड टू लिवर डिजीज सो दिस डिस्कशन इज टू रिमाइंड अस दैट जॉन्डिस कूड सिग्निफाई सम अदर डिसऑर्डर्स डिसाइड्स लिवर डिजीज it is not uncommon to see yellow discoloration of palms and soles due to carotinemia which is particularly seen in older infants and young toddlers we know that this is due to excess ingestion of carrots beetroots papaya mango etc and this is not considered as a disease on another note significant pallor can sometimes be mistaken as yellow discoloration of the skin and parents bring their children and complain that the skin looks yellow and on examination we may find that it is just pallor when it comes to actual jaundice the disorders could be hepatobiliary or hematological so the first step is to clinically distinguish between conjugated and unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia which is done by asking for the presence or absence of high color dark yellow urine conjugated hyperbilirubinemia is due to hepatobiliary disorders for clinicians the liver can be divided into four parts liver parenchyma biliary tract venous system and the re system jaundice can be due to liver parenchymal disease or due to biliary tract disease but it is not due to the other two parts when it comes to liver parenchymal disease the patient in an acute liver parenchymal disease looks sick whereas a patient with a biliary tract disease looks relatively comfortable even with deeper jaundice comparatively acute liver parenchymal disease often presents with jaundice but chronic liver disease may present with growth failure edema feet ascites portal hypertension and jaundice may or may not be there now acute primary liver parenchymal disease as is classically seen in viral hepatitis presents with nausea vomiting anorexia and jaundice but the liver can be secondarily involved in what is not primarily a liver disease so a newborn may present with newborn with sepsis or metabolic disorders may present with conjugated jaundice of course with some other symptoms like refusal to feed uh, fever vomiting etc or an older child or adult may present with a few days of fever where the primary disease is probably typhoid or malaria and then a little later in the disease as a complication they may manifest jaundice so here the primary diagnosis is made on the basis of the fever and its characteristics and the fact that the jaundice has come up a little later in the course of the disease tells us that it is not primarily a liver disease similarly there could be patients who present with a biphasic illness in which jaundice is seen in the second phase as a immune complication of the primary infection for example in hlh that is hemolymphophagocytic histiocytosis let's take the example of non hepatotropic viruses viruses like eb virus and enterovirus may present with varied clinical manifestations pertaining to different organ systems and as a part of their generalized involvement they may also involve the liver this involvement is usually limited to elevation of transaminases but at times it may result in clinical jaundice metabolic disorders again can involve the liver as a part of the general involvement as is seen in inborn errors of metabolism where there will be other symptoms besides jaundice or metabolic disorders could specifically involve the liver as in wilson disease where if there is jaundice it is without the prodrome of nausea and vomiting 
that is seen in classic viral hepatitis. At times, we see enzyme deficiencies like Dubin-Johnson and Rotor syndrome who may present with mild conjugated hyperbilirubinemia as the only isolated manifestation and there is no other disturbance of health. Let's come to biliary tract disorders. When a neonate presents with conjugated jaundice, we call it neonatal cholestasis. It is extremely important to rule out or confirm extrahepatic biliary atresia and the probability of diagnosing this is more if there is accompanying clay colored stools. When such an infant with neonatal cholestasis is not growing well in spite of adequate nutrition, we suspect congenital infection or neonatal hepatitis. Neonatal cholestasis can also be due to intrahepatic paucity of bile ducts, which is often syndromic, or progressive familial intrahepatic cholestasis. Cholidocal cyst can present at any age. Adults may present with obstructive jaundice and severe right hypochondriac pain due to gallstones. Nowadays, with the widespread use of ultrasonography, a lot of children are also being diagnosed with gallstones, but they hardly present with any symptoms and certainly they hardly present with jaundice. Adults may present with jaundice as the first manifestation of a local malignancy as well. Coming to unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. While it may be seen in hepatitis in the early phase of the illness, it also has other causes. So amongst the benign causes are once again enzyme deficiencies like Gilbert or Krigler-Najjar syndrome type 2 where there is a defect in the conjugation of bilirubin in the liver and therefore they may present with just mild persistent jaundice. But more importantly, we must remember that unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia can be due to hemolysis. So right in the newborn period, we see physiological jaundice, which is due to hemolysis of those so-called extra RBCs. At times, we see pathological jaundice due to ABO or RH incompatibility and the resultant hemolysis. In an older child or adult, we may suspect a congenital hemolytic anemia like hereditary spherocytosis if the patient presents with acoluric jaundice, pallor, splenomegaly and some degree of short stature. The diagnosis is clinically confirmed if one parent also has prenomegaly and short stature. Other congenital hemolytic anemias like thalassemias routinely do not present with jaundice. They present with jaundice only in complicated situations like a hepatitis B infection acquired, etc. This is so because hemolysis in thalassemia is in the form of ineffective erythropoiesis which means the red blood cells are destroyed in the bone marrow before hemoglobinization. Similarly, patients with sickle cell disease also do not present with baseline jaundice, but may present with jaundice during sickling crisis. Sometimes we see patients with a trivial febrile illness, which is followed by jaundice, pallor, and splenomegaly at which times we must also suspect autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Sometimes a patient may take suddenly sick after the consumption of a drug and may present with dark cola colored urine and jaundice at which times we must suspect a drug induced hemolysis in a situation like a G6PD deficiency. So to summarize, besides primary liver disease, Jaundice could also signify biliary tract disease, hemolytic disease or a generalized infection or disease where the liver involvement is only a part of the whole story. Thank you. The next video will be by Dr. Anjali Gokan on Pallor Think Beyond Deficiency.